Hi guys, so Cole's mobile crane build part 3 and this is the short version for those of you who haven't got an hour to spend watching me put every nut and bolt together which is perfectly understandable so let's tell you what's happened since you were here last week which on the face of it doesn't look like a right lot to be fair because there was quite a bit this week of me backtracking having to fix mistakes I made previously trying to figure things out, swearing at the paperwork you know, generally doing stuff like that, which, you know, is, is an intrinsic part of any build that I do. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm not the only one who's saying that, that other people have those problems as well. But um, anyway, that, that that's what we did. So let's show you what we got to. Um, first of all, this was only halfway finished when you last came to it. That's the uh, chassis. I'd done that side and then I'd run out of parts. So I had to go and get um, another flat girder, which managed to do that. So we finished this off. And then we also put across these struts here, which um, are going to act as supports for the uh, bearing when it goes in there. And speaking of the bearing, here it is. Now the uh, first thing to notice is that this sprocket chain is no longer dropping off quite to the extent that it was um, before. Um, and that's because I've removed one link from it. Just one link has made the difference between it being quite sloppy and falling to something that seems, you know, I'm not saying it couldn't move, but it seems reasonably tight in where it is. I did get suggestions from people on the Rust Bucket forum about potentially tensioners um, or a wire. Uh, tensioners, I didn't really see where I could fit one in, to be honest with you, because it's, it's very tight all the way around this circle. So wasn't sure where a tensioner would actually go in that and I've never put a tensioner into anything before either so I wasn't 100% sure I would go about it anyway so tend not to go with tensioners there was a suggestion of putting um, fine wire in to hold it in place and I did have a go at that but I found that I couldn't really get the wire tight enough and to be honest at this point it doesn't seem like it needs anything more it is staying there in place quite handily I mean, we'll see when we get to the point where it's got to um, actually start being used but for the time being, leaving it as it is. The other thing that um, arose from here was that I found that I put these in the wrong slots, looking at them from above. Um, these are the adjusted versions now, they're in the right holes. And I've also put one, I've got a bolt of the wrong length, but I've, I've moved the bolts around it. I don't actually think I needed to do that. I think it would have still fit in the slots, in the holes that I put them in. In, but when I looked it was uh, the wrong ones. I'd also, because I'm stupid, not realised how the bearing worked and that it was going to move on these circular girders above here. I was really scratching made as to what was actually going to move but now I've figured it out and I had to slacken off these bolts a little bit to get some movement in this bearing because it was just so tight it wasn't moving. But now that I've done that uh, and uh, copious amounts of silicon WD-40 in there to help it do, what we've got is a bearing that actually rotates and didn't have that before. Hopefully slagging it off a little bit doesn't mean that these ball bearings are all going to fall out at some point because that would be a tragedy and, and you would see a grown man cry. But you know it seems okay it seems to be working. Um, this will eventually go into this here. These are the locating pins for it. You know, at that stage, according to the instructions, but that's where it's eventually going to go in like that. And that will form this bit here. I don't know if you can see that, but I can hold it up again. This bit here will be that bit of the chassis there. So the cladder, you won't be able to see this, it'll be underneath all this yellow stuff, but that is what will form it. And then this on here will be the bit that that large section rotates on. Uh, what I think we're a long way away from that. I reckon that on the basis that there are 14 pages of instructions and we're doing about half a page a time, give or take, that gives us 28 weeks of this. So let's, let's call it seven months to be on the top side. So I reckon that we might be looking at getting this finished sometime around the end of February, beginning of March of 2022. That, that's at the end of it, it gets finished when it gets finished. It's not like there's a deadline on it, but um, I'm seeing it as a project that's going to evolve over the course, case of the next seven months. 
So there you go, you're up to speed. This is what we've got. I'm quite pleased that I've got this to the point where what is quite a complicated structure appears to be working as it should be doing. And uh, yeah, we'll move on. See you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, you can go ahead and take care of that right now. And um, yeah, thanks very much. See you later.